that's probably the best way to experience an airport closure, hanging out at home watching Forecast Lab. Well, we do have a lot of thunderstorms going on. Yeah, check out Mississippi, a north-south MCS all the way from Baton Rouge to just east of Memphis. And this is the movement on this thunderstorm area. It's come out of Louisiana this morning and is marching eastward. And then we have this other segment extending from about Columbus, Mississippi, through Atlanta, where we had that closure, and all the way up into Virginia. There's the lowdown from SPC, moderate risk covering much of Mississippi and Alabama, and tornado watches for that region. Not quite as far as Atlanta, though. And there's the main tornado watch. The Jackson, Mississippi radar showing quite an assortment of severe thunderstorm warnings. And we've got one confirmed tornado. And that's at the time we're recording this. That's going to be around Prospect and Dixon. And we'll zoom in on that. This is a fairly linear storm complex. However, you can still get spin-ups along the leading edge. So let's keep in mind where the storm is. I'm going to put a dot right here, and that's going to mark the leading edge of the line at this time. Going to storm relative velocity, that's going to be the leading edge, and this is going to be stuff out ahead of it, which doesn't look like it's doing very much. Now, typically, we're concerned about very strong gradients on the leading edge, so this area here could be of concern. However, at this time, not really seeing very much, maybe a weak circulation. And what we're looking for is green inbounds towards the radar, which is down that way, and red outbounds. So here we've got a very loose, broad circulation. May not have very much going on. Stepping back earlier, though, we do see that the storm probably had a little bit more of a circulation going on. So looking east from the radar, you can see that long line of outflow, and that's very dark purple, which indicates that a lot of that is 50 to 60 knots. So there should be some gusts up near at least 40 to 50 on the ground, and that could get us up in that realm of storm damage. It's always very tricky interpreting wind. You really need to be broadside from the radar. This is an ideal setup here, but down the line, you can see we're more perpendicular, and it gets very hard to discern the wind fields back in this region. So we would have to look for other radars, and we really don't have any. And that's where law enforcement and spotter reports are very important. There's how things look on the national map. Slow-moving frontal system with a bare clinic low in northeastern Arkansas around the Jonesboro area, and that cold front extends down to Houston and around Laredo. You can see how warm it is at Houston. So even though they're well west of the thunderstorm activity, the front has not passed through that region. The cold air being driven by this 1019 millibar high across Kansas, and it's part of this big ridge extending all the way down from the northern plains, bringing that cold air eastward. And there's the storm complex defined by these outflow boundaries. And then up in the northeast U.S., we haven't covered that very much, but we can see that it is a warm day in Philadelphia, Dover, Wilmington. 83 degrees there, contrasting with 50s and even 40s in Massachusetts. Got another frontal wave up there in upstate New York, near Rochester. And... We got that warm front extending down towards Newark and Philadelphia. And then just a quick check up in the Canadian region. It is warming up, starting to see 40s and 50s way up north in the Northwest Territories. There they are. And that contrasts with these 20s and 30s up north. And you notice a distinct absence of sub-zero conditions. It is warming up for sure. Finally getting into May here. So let's look at the pressure and thickness chart. I don't think we've done this really in a while. Let me bring this up to 21Z. That'll get us, get us up to the current hour. So where are the fronts? Well, we look at the thickness lines, the red and the blue. They're basically the same thing, all the way up towards the core of the cold air. And that's up there in northern Manitoba. 
the core of the warm air, that's going to be where we have that thickness ridge. We find that in Arizona. So we know we're going to see some very warm conditions in the California deserts down towards Phoenix and Tucson. The front is going to lie in between on the warm side of the gradient. Here's a gradient there in Texas. You can see some evidence of that bear clinic low we talked about on the surface chart, and that's going to put the cold front right down through here. It kind of loses definition in the mountains in Mexico, but a little trace of it returns up in Arizona and Nevada. This air down to the south, that's all that continental tropical air. It's all heated by the sun on the warm deserts. Then as you go north, we have the transitional air and that marks the frontal boundary, which we find down to the south. And what else do we got going on? A lot of thunderstorm activity there in the southeast that we talked about. The GFS is not going to be really good at resolving that. It's not a, really a true mesoscale model. So we find kind of a noisy pattern in here. If we really want to use a model to dig in and see what's going on, the best thing we should do is Look at the high resolution rapid refresh. There's what the corresponding chart looks like. Kind of hard to see what's happening, so we need to zoom in on the southeast US. And that gives us a much better picture of what's happening. Now to use this, what we want to do is see if the models are handling the movement of these convective complexes. This is uh, 4 p.m. about the time that we're recording this, and we want to kind of find out if that's in the same ballpark. A lot of times we find that reality outruns the models, and sometimes it's also the other way. Now, instead of looking at individual radars, I strongly suggest using the composite radar for this kind of task. And what we see here is reality is, in fact, outrunning the models. It's already out there in eastern Mississippi about to cross over into Alabama. The tail end about halfway down the border of southeast Louisiana there. And you can see that's quite a difference. So the line is actually located something like that and then down like that. So we're going to expect this system to be in Alabama faster than the high resolution rapid refresh is indicating. So by this evening three hours down the line. It's got it all the way to Birmingham and down towards Thomasville and north of Biloxi. So obviously we're going to probably see movement further east than that. And that could have impacts as that interacts with this other line here and some more bad weather, probably heading for Atlanta later. SPC's storm reports as of 2110Z do have one little isolated tornado report there near Jackson. Technically, that's near Piney Wood, Star, and Rankin County. That was much earlier today, 1411Z. That was with that early convection. Nothing since then. A few scattered hail reports here and there. Most of that's in North Carolina, Virginia. And the wind reports, that's really where we're having the problem. So you can use this SPC storm reports to really get an idea of what your hazards are. And you can see just tons of wind reports. A lot of these are actually in Virginia. We need to pan over there and see what's going on. But uh, yeah, a few of them in Mississippi. Let's head over to Virginia and see what's happening. So this is it. Looks like Bow Echoes moving through Virginia. This is the Washington DC area. We have Richmond down to the south. And I'm guessing that a lot of those reports were probably coming from this thing. It's moving through the southern D.C. area towards Andrews Air Force Base and southward down the Chesapeake River. And there it is. Severe thunderstorm warning for 60 mile an hour wind gusts. And then further down to the south in MCS, broken up into some smaller bow echoes along its length. Switching over to the velocity, the radar is up towards the northwest. So let's check that out. 
Well, certainly a lot of outbounds. This is going to correspond to about 40 to 50 knots. So nothing too extreme there. And then with the storm relative velocity, I'm not really seeing any major problems in that complex. Just a little bit of vague cyclonic rotation. And typically that's what we see with these bookend vortices. The complex kind of bowing out like that, and then we get that vague curl up on the north side. With these, we can't really analyze the wind field too well because we're looking at it lengthwise from the radar. However, the base velocity field doesn't really show too many problems. Maybe some circulation down here around Spotsylvania, but I'm not really inclined to start looking at other radars to check that out. Still though, there is certainly some continued wind potential as that moves eastward. Well, I wanna get this wrapped up so you can enjoy it as soon as possible. So let's take a quick crash course look at the patterns over the next week using the mid-level charts, the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. And this is showing a progressive flow, polar front jet running like that from the Pacific across much of the US and out into the Atlantic and broken up into a couple of troughs with vortices to the north of the jet. Now I would expect that this pattern will be moving. I don't see much in the way of blocking. So those should continue to the east as we move through over the next week. So midweek, ridge building on the west coast, some troughing here and there, long wave trough in the eastern U.S. with these medium waves. And I would expect that the whole thing should push eastward. And we can see the ridge being squeezed down into the Rockies, big trough coming on the west coast, and then these long waves bunching up along the east coast around Friday. So it looks warm going into the weekend for the high plains. And here comes our next trough out of Idaho, Utah, Wyoming into the Central Plains. We've been looking at Central Plains potential for a while this weekend, and that may be the case. Looks like maybe some blocking trying to get established. That's kind of a vague omega block right there, so that could slow things down. Then the 10th and 11th. That trough rotating right here. We've got southwesterly flow in Texas. And so if the Gulf is open with this fast flow, I think we've got good potential for thunderstorms in Kansas, the Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Colorado. So that's the start of next week. Then we've got this trough moving into the Midwest. Probably some MCS potential with that. Another trough moving in. So it looks like maybe that blocking really didn't do a whole lot. So we're back into progressive flow by the 15th and just a series of troughs moving across the plains, a little bit of ridging here and there. So that'll give us kind of a mixed bag of weather going into the middle of May. And that's all I've got for this edition of Forecast Lab. I do want to let you know of a very important change. I am really needing a break here because uh, this Webcast takes up a huge chunk of the afternoon and I'm really getting behind on software and the books and I'm thinking I'm going to have to take about four weeks. Now what I'm going to do, let me put it like this, the non-supporters, it's going to look like a four week break. There may be a couple of videos here and there, but we will be for the most part offline. For our Patreon supporters, it will be a much different picture. Now, I will be taking that time off on slow days where there's not much severe weather going on because I'm going to have to have that break to catch up. But where we have significant severe weather, I will be back. And if I can find some extra time, I will also come back and give you some content. But this is necessary so I don't burn out and I have to get caught up on all this other work. The videos take up multiple hours and I've got to find some balance even if it's just temporary. I will make a definite effort to put out the videos that you're accustomed to. So it looks like we're gonna start that break around May 10th. Again, if there's any severe weather, we'll try to cover that for the supporters. 
but that break is going to run through at least a few weeks, or at least until I make significant progress with some of these projects. So we'll play it by ear, and I, I don't know exactly when the break's going to be over, maybe around the first or second week of June. We'll see what happens. Anyway, that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you back tomorrow for the Wednesday edition. Bye-bye.